perfect posture at Mass. Welcome back to Spiritual Strength. I'm Gene Zanetti, your coast-to-coast spiritual, spiritual coach from Spiritual Strength. Basically now, all Masses are coming back. This will probably be the first week that all Masses are back on the calendar. So we want to enter Mass better than when we first left Mass. So first and foremost, it begins in our heart. Okay, we talk about posture. We cannot underestimate the the importance of first of all having a heart that's properly disposed and being in the right place, being in a prayerful place, putting God first. We're not trying to be Pharisees. We're not trying to be hypocrites. And all about the show. That's the last thing we want to do. So first and foremost, we want to get our heart right. Secondly, Jesus tells us, "Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect." So we want our body language at Mass to be as perfect and crisp as we possibly can. We turn back to Catholic tradition. What has been the timeless tradition for how we carry our bodies at Mass? Because remember, we're either edifying the people around us or we're disedifying the people around us. Okay, so we want to build other, one another up. So let's when we get back to Mass, let's get back better than when we were before. Perfect posture. So let's take things from the top. I have some notes right in front of me. Perfect posture at Mass. First and foremost, behave in such a way that all who are present are edified by it. And through you are urged to glorify the love of your Heavenly Father. So that's one. We already covered that. Now, arrival. First things first, when you arrive, arrive at least 15 minutes early so you become properly disposed. So you're reflective. So you're in a prayerful state. So get there 15 minutes early. You don't want to just... When you get back to Mass for the first time, arrive right before everything starts. So... 15 minutes early. Enter the church in silence and with great respect. Now take holy water and make the sign of the cross carefully and slowly. As soon as you're before God in the blessed sacrament, you want to devoutly genuflect. Once you found your place, kneel. Okay, don't just sit, kneel. Now we'll go through what that looks like more concretely. A few general points though. Your movements should be slow, dignified, reverent. You don't want to be cocky, not proud, not affected, so not with a lot of emotions or anything. It's it's very recollected, calm, composed. Don't fidget and be natural. You're not a tin soldier, okay? Carry out every religious act with the greatest possible devotion. And every time you pass the genu- you every time you pass the tabernacle, you genuflect. Every time, okay? Modesty Never gaze about and smile at other people unless, of course, charity makes it, unless charity um, necessitates it. You really, it's it's not a matter of, um, now's not the time to socialize or popularity. Absolutely smile before and after. If people pass you by, you could make a smile, but don't be going out of your way looking for that. Um, be modest in your glances. Don't he- don't turn your head from here to there to see who enters and leaves. A lot of times the door is open and closed or you hear a baby crying where someone makes a noise and we turn our head, um, that's called rubbernecking. Don't do it at Mass. Eyes on the prize, right? And the prize is Jesus, of course. Uh, d- don't laugh the best of your ability. I remember when I was younger, my brothers and I sometimes cracking jokes or even saddling. We were altar boys giving each, other's, giving each other looks. People, Other people see that. It's not edifying to other people. It's not helping your soul either. Next, don't... Um, speak to anyone. Don't hold unnecessary conversations, except of course when charity strictly necessitates. Say every word, if you're going to participate in Mass out loud, say every word distinctly and observe pause as well. Never hurry. Okay, very important. Now we'll go through some of the concretes. So when you make the sign of the cross, when you make the sign of the cross, you want your elbow to be in the whole time. So let me take a knee here. When I make the sign of the cross, your elbow is tight to your body. You don't dip your head in the name of the Father. So one hand should be just below your um, chest. And I got these tips from different altar boy books and um, different things like that, different videos on YouTube of training, so how your posture should be. One hand is just below your chest in the name of the Father and of the Son just, just above the hand by your chest and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you want to Get rid of any antics that you might have in terms of naming the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then you kiss your hand or even kissing your cross. What you do privately, that's your own business. Go ahead and do that. That's fine. But when you're at Mass, you want that body language to be perfect. So you're right here. Once your hands separate, one hand goes just below your chest. The other hand, in the name of the Father, 
and that the Son, elbows are in tight the whole time, and that the Holy Spirit, amen. And your right thumb is over your left. Your fingers are together. Your palms are together, just like this. Your hands are right at your chest, and they're looking up. Your fingers should be pointing up and towards wherever the action is taking place. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, gospel crosses. When the priest says a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, you take your hands out. Anytime your hands are you're standing, your hand should be right here. Anytime you do something with one hand, the other hand goes across your chest. Do your actions with your right hand, other hand goes just under your chest, rather. The gospel crosses, you have to, you have to split your hands. So your left hand goes just under your chest, your fingers are together, you're on a 45 degree angle, your head does not drop. Glory to you, oh Lord. So your hands are just like this. Elbows tight to your body, you're not cocking your elbow out. Glory to you, oh Lord. You're right there. Fingers crossed, your head is up the whole time. Next, as we said, your hands are always just above your chest, fingers pointing upward, your fingers are together, your right thumb is over your left. That's something I had to change. I always held my right thumb, uh, my left thumb, over the right, so changing that. When carrying something in one hand, this is more for altar boys, when you're carrying something with your right, your left hand's right across, as we said before. When you're walking, your back is straight, your head is held high. Avoid walking backwards or sideways. Turn your body entirely around, and then walk. It doesn't look good when we're, when we're moving like this or when, or when we back up like this. Just simply turn your body around and walk in the direction you're going. And remember, as we said before, let me tilt the screen up here. And we're standing when we get over here. See, my hand should be right there when I'm doing something in this, right? So when I'm walking, you don't have to be like this, okay? You could be loose. Elbows are tight to your body. See, I'm, I'm loose. I'm calm. I'm not, I'm not right here. I'm not a soldier. Okay, so when you're walking, what do we have? Your back straight, head held high. Avoid walking backwards. Genuflecting. Okay, when you genuflect, again, your hands are always in front of your chest. You go down to your right knee. You don't wobble. You keep your body upright. And remember this, when you genuflect, your right knee goes down right next to your left heel. You can't see me, but it's right here. It's a very shallow genuflection. When you genuflect, you don't make the sign of the cross. It's, it's, that's a different posture. You don't bow your head, you keep your head up the whole time, and back up. Okay, so it's right knee goes down to your left, right by your left heel. Boom, you're right there, don't wobble, and right up. Next, when you're gonna when you're gonna actually kneel, key thing is again, you're gonna do the same kind of movement. Your right knee goes down to your left heel. Now you're gonna bring your left knee to match your right heel. Your head is still up the whole time, and then when you get up, your left foot comes up first. Your left foot steps up, and remember, your heel goes to about where your right knee is, and then you step up. And when you're standing, you want your feet, what do we have here for standing? I have the, the rubrics right here, six to eight inches apart. So big mistake I would make in mass sometimes, my feet too close together. No, six to eight inches apart, and we're right here. What else do we have? Mm, begin with your left foot. Sitting, sit carefully and gracefully. Sit tall, don't slouch. Place your hands on your lap in front of your thighs in a relaxed manner. And don't cross your legs. So let me get to my, let me get to my chair over here. So one of the things we want to have is we're sitting up again. You don't have to be like this. Okay, we're not trying to be tin soldiers here. But your back should be off, this, off, the, off the seat, behind, off the pew behind you. Your hands are placed right there. Fingers should be at the top of your knees. My back is off and my feet are flat on the floor. I'm not crossing my legs. And remember, at any point in time, whether we're standing, whether we're kneeling, we're not swaying. We're not swaying. We're not going up and down on our toes. We got to fight that urge. Sometimes that's tough for me too because, you know, you're, you're in one place for a while. You, you feel the need to go up or sway side to side. You're right here, nice and relaxed. Sit carefully and gracefully. Place your hands on your lap, relaxed manner. Okay, feet fir when you're standing, feet firmly on the floor. Don't lean on anything. When you're in church, don't lean on things. When you're kneeling, don't, don't rest your hands on the front. Just keep your hands up. Go straight up the whole time. Eyes, always look where the action is happening. What do we have here? You want to bow your head anytime the name Jesus is mentioned, anytime the name Mary is mentioned, and also anytime... The Trinity is mentioned together, as in at the end of the 
um, at the end of the Gloria, the Trinity is mentioned together, your head comes down, or when the, or when the priest uh, mentions the Trinity together. When your head bow should be smooth, it should be slow, and it should be graceful. Very simple. Right there. And we're relaxed. After Mass, now we're going to, uh, at the end of Mass, stay for an extra 10 minutes to give thanksgiving. Okay, so remember, you have the body of Christ inside you. You are substantially um, connected to Jesus Christ, the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So you want to take that time while Jesus is still substantially present inside you and you're united that way. For you know that those 10 minutes, give thanksgiving. Stay after. And that's that's usually when I think that your prayers, it's got to be the most fruitful. I'm pretty sure this is documented also, whether it's by mystics or just by the church. Your prayer is the most fruitful when Jesus is, when you've just received Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. What else do we have here? On leaving, you should be calm and recollected. Don't dart right out of the door. And, and again, right away, keep the conversations to a minimum. Try not to say anything or start laughing or cracking jokes right away. Get out of the church, go into the breezeway, and then and then all the smiles, love, and affection to your friends in the world, uh, reasonably, of course. So when we're in Mass, when we're in the church even, not, not just in Mass, but when we're in the church, whether or not the Blessed Sacrament is exposed, it's, a, it's an important time. It's a, it's a solemn thing. Jesus is there. He's there in the tabernacle. So you want to take it serious. You want to do the right things, and it's not social hour. So again, you can smile at people, give a little head nod, but keep your head straight. Kneel, pray, be with the Lord at that time. Not, not really the time to crack jokes or nudge each other with a friend or look around to see who's there, uh, laughing and smiling at people. Absolutely, say before, before Mass, before the 15 minutes, before you step into the church, um, after Mass in the breezeway, be personable. Speak to people. Don't just be in your shell and a sour puss the whole time. You just got to be with, with the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Smile. Be happy with people. right? Uh, speak with people. Ask them how they're doing. Great time after Mass or, like we said before, outside of the church. The breezeway outside. So follow those tips. When we go back to mass tomorrow, we want to be better than when we came. We want to be better than when we last, when we last left in March. A lot of people haven't gone to mass since March, or maybe some people have just started going back to mass these past couple days. So body language is perfect as we possibly can, because we're trying to glorify God to the absolute best of our ability. Like I said, all the stuff that we said doesn't matter if your heart's not in it. If you're genuinely not trying to build your relationship with the Lord, to be close with Him, if your heart's not in it, you could do all the perfect posture you want. It really doesn't mean all that much. But that being said, if your heart is in it, you want to make sure you give God the maximum glory and edify the people around you. So this should help your body language. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable at first, I'm not going to lie. It'll probably be uncomfortable for quite some time. But think about it. If Mass is an hour hour and a half, that's a great mortification for yourself. That's a great time to give something up for the Lord and say, Lord, during this time, I'll be uncomfortable for you. Give that up for the Lord. Offer up that suffering for the Lord and edify the people around you. So it's, it's a great thing. And you find when your posture is proper, it's easier to pray. There's a reason why these postures are there in church. It's because it facilitates a prayerful state in us. It edifies the people around us. So let's give it a shot. Perfect posture is at Mass. God bless you. God bless your families.